Our next speaker is Mary Hirschfeld, and she's assistant professor of theology and economics at Villanova uh, University. Um, her area of expertise is the boundary between economics and theology, which I think she runs in a pretty small crowd there, specializing in that. Her background, PhD in economics from Harvard and a PhD in theology from the University of Notre Dame. But I think what's most intimidating about her was that at one point she was a national uh, champion in Jeopardy, which we just found out. <laughs> so now having completely embarrassed her, Mary. Uh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here uh, this morning with you all. Um, I took my charge just to address the question about whether libertarianism is compatible with Catholic social thought. And I will answer that question, I promise. Um, but I wanted to start off by complaining about it a little bit. Um, and, and the complaint is this. The question strikes me as being rooted in our politically polarized country that roughly divides on economic questions between a market state binary with people on the right thinking that the market is wonderful and people on the left thinking that there's a, there should be an expanded role for the state. Um, but as Catholics, we really shouldn't elevate what is an instrumental question that way. Catholic social thought invites us to pursue a just society, uh, a special concern for the poor, the common good, solidarity, subsidiarity. It's a well-described vision of a, society, uh, of a humane society, a just society. Okay. It is not the case that Catholic social thought teaches that we should achieve those goals by the market, nor is it the case that Catholic social thought teaches that we should achieve those goals through the state. It's that we should pursue those goals full stop. Okay. In a complex world, it's almost certainly the case that sometimes the market is the way, sometimes the state is the way, and maybe even more importantly, sometimes it's communal organizations or other forms of social networking that are the way. Okay. As Michael Sean Winters puts it in an argument that the left should give poor old Paul Ryan a hearing on the question of poverty, it should be all hands on deck. We should invite everybody to these conversations about how best to pursue these important goals. Okay, so that's my complaint to the question. All right. Um, the first question I had to ask is, what, what do you mean by libertarianism? There's a spectrum of libertarians. There's some who are very, very extreme, and then there's some who are more thoughtful and moderate. Um, so if by libertarianism you mean something like what you read in Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged, um, the John Galt speech, uh, then the answer is really quite simple, no. It's not compatible with Catholic social thought. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly mention two reasons. Uh, one is it's premised on a faulty understanding of the relationship between the individual and her society. I think Dr. Clark has just spelled this out theologically very, very well. Um, but it's also an ancient tradition that the fullness of human nature is found in community with others. Um, I'm certainly an individual with agency, but the very fact that I'm using language to speak with you is because I'm part of a social relationship. I, I'm unintelligible apart from the rest of you. Um, so libertarianism doesn't have much room for that kind of an idea. Uh, because I'm an economist by training, uh, you can see this sort of idea that there's this essentially social aspect to our human nature by thinking about our economic life. And um, this goes back to that crazy radical Adam Smith. Um, pretty much, our, the fact that we work together in society through specialization of labor and trade and all the rest of it makes us fantastically more productive than we would be if we were forced to produce for ourselves in isolated splendor. And you can see this very simply. Put yourself out on an island and I will endow you with all the resources in the world and I will even cheat and give you all the technology in the world and I invite you to construct a standard of living even remotely approaching the one that you enjoy today. Okay, that difference is largely the social benefit we get from working together. Okay, it's a huge amount. When Elizabeth Warren said you didn't build that, she was in some sense not going far enough. She meant to say that the government has provided infrastructure and that you've received an education. But in point of fact, the mere fact of us producing together socially is a real source of a huge amount of wealth. And if that's the case, if we benefit so tremendously from our social participation, 
in the economy, um, it, it follows, I think, almost immediately that we were responsible for how that social entity functions as a whole. That means there has to be some responsibility for how it's impacting the marginalized. Okay, so uh, the RAND vision has no room for that. Off with its head. Um, <laughs> so. um, also, what you find in the Randian segment is a, st a strong notion that, that um, material goods are really fantastically wonderful. Um, epitomized in uh, Gecko's thing about greed is good. Uh, this is clearly in contradiction with Catholic social thought. Uh, the tradition clearly understands material goods as, in fact, good, but as order to higher ends, namely sustaining human life, giving us the ability to flourish in community with one another and all the rest. Um, and that means, among other things, that our desire for those goods sh is properly bounded. So it's perfectly fine for me to pursue self-interest in some <coughs> proper bounded sense, um, but if my idea of pursuing my own good is to rack up millions or billions, um, it's just a mistaken understanding of what role material goods should play. Uh, the classic example that everybody should know and love is medicine, right? So medicine is an instrumental good. If I have a headache, I need two aspirin to fix my headache. That means I need two aspirin. Four aspirin isn't going to make me better off. Ten aspirin isn't going to make me better off. <coughs> And material goods are pretty much exactly the same thing. If I need a certain amount of money to sustain a standard of living appropriate to someone like myself in my situation, that's what I need, and I don't need any more. Okay? And if you get that idea right, a lot of things fall into place, and the Randian vision really doesn't get it right. Of course, a lot of the rest of us don't get it right either, but okay. All right, so forget about Rand. Um, but what about... We, we shouldn't stigmatize all people who are sort of right-leaning as being far right, right? So what about a more moderate libertarianism? What about somebody who's thoughtfully inclined to think markets are a good way to go? Um, can they still be a good Catholic? And here I want to say yes and no, okay? And I want to start with yes. First of all, in addition to solidarity being an important feature of Catholic social thought, so too is subsidiarity, okay? That's the idea that we need to recognize that it's important for individuals to be agents. That's an important part of human flourishing. As John Paul II argues in Labor and Exercens, the activity of work itself is an essential expression of the human person. Okay, so as we think about having solidarity with the poor and the needy, we need to avoid making them objects of our concern, right? And remember that our real aim is to help facilitate their achievement of their own agency to the extent possible. And I do think some forms of libertarianism has a resonance with that insight that's, that, that should be taken on board. Um, in addition, some forms of libertarianism are mostly interested in limiting the role of the state, not just in favor of the agency of the individual, but also in favor of the agency of communal organizations and networks, like unions, like churches, like the PTA. Um, and that's strongly in keeping with the Catholic social thought, and we would be, do well to be mindful of that, to keep that in mind. A second valuable feature of your average moderate libertarian person is that they are um, keenly aware of the fact that there are some limitations to what government can do. Um, they have perfectly good reasons for suspecting that well-intentioned government policies can fail both inadvertently and advertently. Um, inadvertently means simply that they understand that just because you care about giving housing to the poor, rent control may not be the most effective way of achieving that end and indeed can be counterproductive. Okay, so it's just a, an invitation to remember that sometimes things have unintended consequences, that they get a lesson they get straight from economics. But also advertently, um, sometimes people use the government for their own personal private ends. From the perspective of some libertarians, they would criticize the left by saying that there's a tendency to make the mistake of thinking that all greedy behavior is channeled through markets and all noble intentions are channeled through the government. Um, but spend some time reading about the veteran affairs scandal and um, that should disabuse you of that notion. Okay, so there's some valuable strands to be drawn from libertarianism and we wouldn't want to throw them out with the strongly objectionable things that we're talking about today. Okay, so, so the, that's some reason to think that a moderate libertarian could be compatible with Catholic social thought. So what's the drawback? 
Um, for me, it depends on how you understand yourself. And if your primary identification is as a libertarian, so you come to Catholic social thought thinking, how can I read that as being compatible with advocacy of expanded role for the market? Um, you are elevating that instrumental question, market versus state, above the Catholic social thought, above the ends that we're meant to pursue. Okay, and that's what I started my talk with, and I'm coming back to it. Um, so that would be the mistake, uh, to identify yourself primarily with the markets first and ask how that serves Catholic social thought, rather than asking to serve Catholic social thought, which on these things on the menu should I use in this particular instance. But notice, of course, I can make that same complaint on the left. Um, so, so, this tendency to identify with either markets or state ends up being pr polarizing precisely because neither side has a monopoly on the truth. They both have insights the other side desperately needs, right? <laughs> markets often fail, they often need correction, there's a role for state, right? The state is not a panacea for all of our ills, sometimes private enterprise or collective action at a more local, um, non-government level is the better way to go. The tragedy would be if we allowed this polarization to take over to the point where we no longer listen to each other about finding the best possible strategy for a given problem in a given place in a given time. Okay. We need to be open to hearing from both sides to get the best answers to these very complex problems that beset us because, again, our goals are noble. It's a humane e economy that we are aiming at. Okay. So if we grant that everybody should want to over, that you've all bought into what I just said and we want to overcome the market state binary, um, what should the Catholic, Catholic view bring to public discourse about these matters? Um, so, and there's a lot. I'm writing a whole book on it, which you can read in two years, and I invite <laughs> you to do that. Um, so, but real briefly, um, one is the idea I've already mentioned to you. Material goods are instrumental goods. They are in service of higher goods. We need to just insist as much as possible that when we worry about poverty, we're not necessarily talking about a lack of material goods, although that's part of it and it's not non-important, it's important. Often what we're talking about with poverty is people are excluded, and Francis emphasizes this, they're excluded from social interactions, they're denied a chance to exercise agency in a certain way. And we need to be focused that those are the human goods we care about. And I think if you stay focused on what those real human goods are, you'll end up with a more nuanced, intelligent approach to how to actually help with the poverty issue. If you just think it's a matter of whether you have X number of dollars below the poverty line, right, it's, you're gonna have a very flat take of the problem and a correspondingly flat set of solutions to consider. Okay, so that's one. Um, the second is the Catholic social vision really does resist the market state binary and it emphasizes working through the culture. Because this is, this is really where our transformations need to be. Um, and again, that goes back to, again, ordering the goods properly so we know what's important so that the human person really is what matters and not the economic goods that are meant to serve that person. Um, so why does this matter? If we don't challenge the culture and if we all have a view that human beings on average are narrowly self-serving, then you're going to get both bad mark out market outcomes and bad state outcomes. If we all think that pursuit of indefinite economic growth and especially a rise in our own personal incomes is always better than not, and most of us think that, then it's going to be very hard to get good market outcomes and it's going to be very hard to get good state outcomes. Okay? Um, because people who are fallen, people who are, have these disordered desires, they're going to express those disordered desires through whatever set of institutions are around them to bad effect. Okay? At the same time, we need to resist with all our might our culture-wide tendency to elevate economic questions to the level of ultimate questions. Um, and that tendency really is the root of a lot of our problems. If we all think that more is always better, it's hard for us to make the personal sacrifices necessary to promote the common good, both in our charity and our willing to tax ourselves and all the rest of it. And as a result, we'll tend to so focus on the sort of pointless polemics that passes for political discourse in our culture because it's a way of expressing a concern for these issues without actually doing anything about it. When I think of Francis' exhortation that we resist the idolatry of the golden calf, I think it's best to not assume he's just talking about those greedy buzzards on Wall Street. It's a culture-wide problem that, <clears throat> that impedes us from doing what we really can do to achieve genuine human community. 
Um, the left and the right manifest that disorder in different ways, but I do believe they're both tarred with it. As Catholics, we have a diagnosis for that disorder and the potential to offer a compelling alternative vision in which material goods are properly subordinated to the higher goods they are meant to serve. So let's stop all this bickering, roll up our sleeves, and get to work. Thank you.